All right, so in the last video, we went through some of the properties that are satisfied by hyperbolic functions. In particular, we established a couple of these identities. We saw some derivatives, so we, we've, we've got a, we're starting to get a handle on how these things work, right? Um, here are a number of other useful identities. Again, analogs of common identities that we use for, um, for trig functions, right? Like double angle formulas, power reduction formulas, sort of in, you know, things analogous to Pythagorean identities. Here we have some basic derivative results. We have one antiderivative. Of course, there are many others that we could write down. These are probably enough to get us started. And here are a few examples where we might put some of this to use. So derivative of cosh h or cosh 2x, right? Hyperbolic cosine at 2x. Um, two ways we can actually do this, right? Well, I mean, we don't need to be fancy. We can simply rely on chain rule, right? Derivative of the outside first, derivative of cosh is cinch, so this is cinch 2x, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Done, right? That's all we got to do. Uh, on the other hand, we could, <coughs> we could also employ an identity here, and we could say, well, you know, um, cosh 2x is cosh squared x plus cinch squared x. And I mean, we're still doing chain rule, or right? we don't get rid of doing chain rule, but we're doing it slightly differently. So here, power function on the outside, right? So the power comes down, reduce the power by one. We're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. And we get sort of the same story here except this time it's hyperbolic sine on the outside and its derivative is hyperbolic cosine. Okay. And while we add those up, we get four cinch x cosh x. And well, that is, according to this identity here, the same thing as two cinch, oops, don't forget the h, two x. Same result either way. Now, for something like this, well, this is simply using, using this result here along with a basic u substitution, right? If we let u equal to 7t minus 3, du will be 7dt. So dt is 1 over 7du. And with that substitution, we simply get 1 over 7, antiderivative for hyperbolic secant squared is hyperbolic tan. Put back in u, 7t minus 3, plus our constant. Simple enough. Okay, and finally, a definite integral, right? Well, we're just going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Antiderivative for cosh is cinch. And we've got to evaluate at the endpoints from 0 to log 2. Okay, um, so we've seen that sinj at 0 is 0. What do we get at log 2? Well, that's e to the log 2 minus e to the minus log 2 over 2. And of course, these are inverses of each other, right? e to the log of 2 is just 2. Bring that minus up if you like, right? So that's 2 to the minus 1, so it's 1 half. 2 minus a half, all divided by 2, we have 3 quarters for that. That might have disappeared off the screen. Sorry about that. So there's a, there's a 2 on the bottom here that you probably can't see. Let me put it here. Okay, so this is cinch of log 2 minus cinch of 0, which is just 3 quarters, right? 3 quarters minus 0, we get 3 quarters. All right. <coughs> 